Why, hello there. My name is Cody, Joey's brother, and uh, we've never met before. And, but, and also, no, we're not going to talk about Batman Eternal today. We're going to talk about my interest today, which is my little pony. Oh, oh I got to go. Hey, Cody, what are you still doing home? I'm getting a job. You told me you will get a job. Get a job, you hobo. I'm out. What's going on guys? Welcome back to Comic Island. My name is Joey and I apologize about that earlier. I got a brother that doesn't have a job right now. But anyway, today we're not going to be talking about My Little Pony. We will be talking about Batman Eternal. Now, I haven't done one of these complete story videos in so long, so I apologize for that. But today we're going to go through one year's worth of Batman Eternal videos, which if you guys remember, they came out weekly. So that's 52 issues, all compressed in under, I'm hoping, 15 minutes or so. So anyway, without further ado, I present to you... Batman Eternal The Complete Story Gotham City, the Dark Knight Detective and Gotham's White Knight, Commissioner Gordon chases Professor Pig's men down the subway. The criminals split, and so does our heroes. Gordon got the thug pinned. He inadvertently fires his weapon, misses the target, and hits the electrical box behind. Subway tracks are now fried, and two trains collide, killing 162 passengers. In the aftermath, Batman offers to stay, but Gordon must answer for his recklessness. Rookie cop Jason Bard, who got hired by Gordon, got his first order, and that is to put the disgraced commissioner in handcuffs. In the fallout, a mysterious man opposes Mayor Sebastian Haiti like he is his personal puppet. Mayor Haiti employs a new commissioner, who is also under the mysterious man's employ. Carmine Falcone has returned to Gotham, and he will bring the city to its knees, starting with the removal of Jim Gordon. But there's currently one problem. Penguin's criminal organization is already the power player in Gotham, so... Falcone brings the fight to the top dog in the yard. Falcone's men hit up multiple weapons depot belonging to the Penguin. A gang war is about to erupt and the GCPD is ready. But new Commissioner Forbes changes the agenda. He allocates all police efforts to capturing the vigilante known as Batman. Meanwhile, teenager Stephanie Brown accidentally walks into her father's criminal gathering. She escapes but now her own father is trying to kill her. After discovering her father will be sent to Blackgate Penitentiary, Barbara Gordon, aka Batgirl, can't fight the justice system, so she takes her rage out on the dirtbags of Gotham. She will go to the ends of the earth to prove her father's innocence. Elsewhere in Gotham, Tim Drake, aka Red Robin, investigates a strange sickness in children. He arrives at Colin Rowe's house where a nano swarm erupts from the child's mouth. Grieving sister Harper Rowe arrives only to find it despair. Red Robin promises the sister that he will find the culprit plaguing the youth of Gotham. Arkham Asylum. Strange things are happening. Jim Corrigan senses dark summonings, so he goes to Batman for help. But Batman is busy with a gang war, so Batwing gets sent in. Back at the gang war, Falcone hits Penguin at his headquarters, the Iceberg Casino. The casino sinks to the bottom of Gotham Harbor, while across town, Batman arrests thugs running with Professor Pig. GCPD arrives, but new Commissioner Forbes releases the thugs due to the fact that their only target right now is Batman. Batman hits up Falcone's operations, making the crime boss lose millions in cash, but still, the GCPD will not arrest the thugs left by him. The following night, Pressured by Falcone, Commissioner Forbes formulates a trap to catch Batman using the bat signal. Led by rookie cop Jason Bard, the plan is in set. Batman arrives and the cop converges on him. Bard gets a clear shot, but he held his gun, allowing the Dark Knight to escape. He gets chastised by the new commissioner, but Bard apologizes for his rookie nerves. Batman finds hope in the GCBD, knowing that Bard was handpicked by Jim Gordon. He decides to leave to Japan to dig up Falcone's past. Arriving in Japan, Batman gets immediately attacked by the local triad. Jiro, the Batman of Japan, arrives to help. He explains that before Falcone left, the crime boss and his Yakuza was on a warpath with rival Shen Feng and his triads. So, Batman does what he does best, and he attacks Shen Feng's organization head on. But before he gets the villain, an SSR agent by the name of Julia Pennyworth stops him stating that Shen Feng is her target. Julia gets wounded in the exchange, but Batman managed to beat the intel out of the crime boss. He discovers that Falcone one day just upped and left Japan, leaving the city to Shen Feng and his triads. No other reason was provided. 
Batman heads home on, with company in tow. Back in Gotham, Catwoman narrowly escapes Falcone thanks to Batman's return. You see, many years ago, Catwoman gave Falcone the scars he bare. He will not forget it, so he broadens the GCPD's hunt for Batman and now for Catwoman as well. Meanwhile, Stephanie Brown starts a blog revealing the truths about her father. She can't go to the police and she can't go home. The girl has nowhere to go, so she spends her nights sleeping at a local library. Batgirl's search for answers led her to Rio de Janeiro. Sent by Batman, Red Hood is there to offer aid. Back at Gotham, Bard comes up with a plan to stop the gang war, but he needs Batman. With Batman's cooperation, Bard sends in the GCPD to a known Batman safe house. Arriving on location, the GCPD discovers not Batman, but Falcone's men handling drugs and a lot of unmarked bills. Everyone gets arrested under Bard's orders. Back at the precinct, Commissioner Forbes attempts to overrule Bard's decision to arrest his boss's people. But news reporter Vicky Vale was brought on board by Jason Bard to ensure the cooperation of the new commissioner. And to make sure everything goes as planned, Jason Bard blackmails the mayor, ensuring that everything goes smooth. The next day, someone tipped off an angered Oswald Cobblepot to one of Falcone's safe houses. Penguin shows that he isn't just a fat slob. He slays Falcone's men and is about to put down his rival. But Bard's GCPD arrives and takes both crime bosses to jail. Penguin and his crew gets placed in Blackgate along with Falcone's thugs, which means corrupt Commissioner Forbes gets taken to Blackgate as well. Jason Bard is the new White Knight of Gotham, so... Mayor Haiti makes the logical choice and appoints the rookie as new GCBD commissioner of Gotham City. Everyone applauds Jason Bard's strategy for stopping the gang war except Batman. Something is off about Jason Bard and the Dark Knight will find out what. Arkham, Jim Corrigan and a Batwing digs deeper into the asylum only to be attacked and separated by zombies. Batwing faces off against Joker's daughter and a hulking zombie figure while Jim Corrigan discovers that it is Deacon Blackfire behind the Arkham mystery. Meanwhile, Batgirl's mission to prove her father's innocence leads her and Red Hood to Rio where they meet up with Batwoman who's on the same case. The trio finds the truth behind Gordon's brash decision to fire the gun. Dr. Falsario had hypnotized Gordon and nudged him to do so. The Bat family found their proof. Tim Drake and Harper Rose's tech virus mission leads them to Tokyo where he meets Sergei Alexandra, the man behind the tech. Unfortunately, it was not him who sent the virus. Tokyo was the dead end. Back in Gotham, while Batman was busy in the sewers with Killer Croc and Jason Bard, Blackgate experiences another riot. Overpopulation from their apprehension of Falcone and Penguin's men have pushed the gang war to the prison and the police are powerless to stop this. Jim Gordon proves his mettle, but it is still not enough. Not until Jim's own cellmate, a timid man who's been in Blackgate for a long time, stands center stage and reveals that he was the man who once controlled the criminal empire in Gotham. His name brings fear to all inmates, Falcone and Penguin's men included. This man is Selina Kyle's own father. This man was, is Rex Calabrese the Lion. Order returns to Blackgate, but at a cost. The Lion has revealed himself. Days later, Falcone's lawyers got him extradited back to Asia. He is free to go, but not before Batman got word. Unfortunately, Batman discovers an invitational letter inviting the criminals to converge upon Gotham following Gordon's downfall. Falcone was only a pawn. Someone else is the puppet master. Back at Wayne Manor, someone breaks into a heavily secured estate and injects Alfred with a heavy dose of Crane's fear toxin. That someone is longtime bat villain, Hush. Blackgate, Jason Bard got the evidence he needed from the Bat family to free Jim Gordon, but instead of using that intel, he frees an inmate and destroys the evidence that would extradite the good commissioner. Julia Pennyworth sends her father to the hospital. While attempting to reach Bruce Wayne, she stumbles onto the Bat Cave where she reaches Batman. Unfortunately, Batman has his hands tied with the inmate Jason Bard released. The Beacon Tower is about to get blown up. Lives are at stake, so the two put aside their concerns for Alfred. Julia aids Batman as his new oracle. Her quick thinking aided Batman in saving Beacon Tower, and he discovers that the man behind it all is his old rival, Hush. 
Batman takes the fight directly to Hush, but gets his ass handed to him. Hush leaves the detective for dead, but his Robins have returned back to Gotham to lend aid. Unfortunately for the Bat family, chaos erupts as criminals all over Gotham are causing hundreds of millions in structural damage, so newly appointed Commissioner Jason Bard initiates martial law. Batman has been through hell thinking his opponent was Falcone, but now he goes up a man who knows him much better than many of the criminals he has fought since he donned the cowl. Hush knows Batman before the Bat. He knows how Bruce thinks, and he wants to burn everything Bruce holds dear, including his Robins and his precious city. Hush is the one behind it all. The nano swarm in the Narrows, the police corruption, the gang war, and even Arkham, where Deacon Blackfire shuts down the mind of Jim Corrigan, releasing the spirit of vengeance, the Spectre. Batman caught wind of Alfred Pennyworth being illegally transferred to Arkham, where Batwing still fights for his life. But the bat arrives too late as the Spectre releases his enormous energy, decimating Arkham and leaving a crumbled building in his wake. Fortunately, the trusty butler survives the collapsed building and got himself to one of Batman's hidden safe houses located inside Arkham. Unfortunately, most of the supervillains of Arkham survives as well and disappears into the city. Alfred, Corrigan, and Batwing returns to the cave with minor injuries, but Hush is still out there. The villain gained intel on the whereabouts of all 17 of Batman's caches located around the city. On Commissioner Bard's orders, officers are posted on each city block where a weapons cache is located. Hush then blows up one of Batman's caches, killing the officers within its blast radius. This strengthens Commissioner Bard's call for martial law and puts Batman as suspect number one due to the massive amount of evidence found at the exploded weapons cache. Batman now races across the city to disarm the remaining 16 weapons cache. With Julia's help, he races across the city to defuse them all. But on the political front, Wayne Enterprise has been exposed as the money behind Batman's caches. If each cache explodes, it would level Gotham City. Another one goes off and Batman was powerless to stop it. But finally, Batman finds Hush at a weapons cache after the villain tripped an alarm. Batman beats Hush into the ground. Defeated, the villain laughs. He also got an invitation to burn Gotham after Gordon's downfall to make matters worse. Lucius Fox, who aids Bruce Wayne at Wayne Enterprises, denounces his position after the police found Batman's weapon caches tied to Bruce Wayne. As of hours ago, all operations of Wayne Enterprise has been seized by the federal government. Bruce Wayne's fortune is gone. The next day, Commissioner Bard wages a new war on Batman. With Lucius Fox's help and with the GCPD behind him, Bard takes control of Batman's Batmobile while it's still in transit. Batman has an ultimatum, give up or speed to his death. Batman chose option 3, causing Jason Bard to steer the Batmobile through Gotham City as if it was a living missile causing millions of dollars worth of damages. His brash action disgusts Detective Bullock and the other officers, but they are forced to stand by to witness their Dark Knight get taken on a literal death race across Gotham City by this rookie cop turned to corrupt commissioner. The journey ends with the Batmobile exploding against the pavement with presumably Batman still inside. The GCPD stands in shock that their new commissioner wouldn't take lengths that far. Jason Bard just became the most hated man in the GCPD. Alone, Bard gets dumped by his girlfriend after she found out about his dark past. Then, Batman arrives. The Dark Knight survived mega villains. Jason Bard will not be enough to take him down, but Bard is still a white knight in the eyes of the civilians of Gotham. Instead of breaking the man, he dares Bard to do the right thing and correct the chaos plague in Gotham. If he don't, the Bat family will not be too far behind. Meanwhile, Catwoman has had enough of the destruction. Arkham inmates are on the loose. Gangbangers no longer have leaders and are tearing her city apart. So. She hangs up the catsuit, takes her title as the lion's daughter, and with Croc as her muscle, she unifies the entire criminal underground with her as its new queen. At this point, Batman is beyond frustration. The prison riots, mass murder, Wi-Fi outages, 
Arkham collapsing, the Beacon Tower incident, police corruption and the gang war. Falcone was only a puppet and so was Hush who is now locked away in the Batcave. Batman travels up north to the mountain seeking answers from the Riddler only to discover that he too received an invitational note and chose not to partake in Batman's destruction. Meanwhile, back in Gotham, the Arkham inmates received all of Batman's toys courtesy of a mysterious man in the shadows. His only request is for them to go play. Elsewhere in Gotham, a Red Robin and Harper Row finally tracked down the Nano Swarm to a warehouse. These viruses have taken control of Harper's brother, Colin, and other adolescents of Gotham, and the man behind it all is the Mad Hatter. He was the man who gave Dr. Falsario the tech to trick Jim Gordon into shooting the electrical box. He is the one behind the chaos plaguing Gotham. He is the one behind it all. Red Robin, Batgirl, and Red Hood were powerless to stop the nanovirus, so now, the Hatter has got Batman's protege under his influence. Harper Roa, being the tech genius that she is, puts together a uniform that will repel the effects of these nano swarms. With it, she brings a fight to the Mad Hatter. EMP grenade shuts down the ones affected and, with the top hat under her possession, she releases everyone under the Mad Hatter's influence. Batman arrives shortly after from following the herd of Nano Swarm kids to the facility. It didn't take long for the Mad Hatter to talk to the Dark Knight. But again, the Batman discovers the same invitational card on the Mad Hatter. The same ones that Falcone and Hush received. Meanwhile, Stephanie Brown steps closer and closer into despair. Her mother knew that her father was a criminal. Her friend's house gets blown up by her own father. Even Hush was out to get her and now, the bounty on her head gets raised to $200 million just because she knows something she wasn't supposed to know. And the new crime boss of Gotham, Catwoman, is now deeply interested. After discovering Harper Rose heroics during the Nano Swarm, Batman recruits her for one mission. Rescue Stephanie Brown from Catwoman by breaking through the front door of her new casino. Selena's enforcers never stood a chance. Martial law is still ongoing and Gotham is dying from within. Batman is running out of leads. New intel points to an old enemy, Ra's al Ghul. Batman leaves Gotham in the care of his protégés while he questions the demon's head, Nanda Parbat. Batman arrives to find a weak and dying al Ghul. The demon also received a letter but chose not to partake in it. Raz will get better from the Lazarus pit. He doesn't care about destroying the detective when he is already broke. Raz will one day relish in knowing that he kills Batman at his best. Back at Gotham, the Arkham inmates with Bruce Wayne's money have purchased themselves a lot of toys that will bring Gotham to its knees. The Bat family gets set to take down the villains while the Dark Knight races back to his city. The situation gets worse when Hush breaks free from his cell and takes over the Batcave. With the Batcave at his disposal, Hush crashes the Batplane with Batman inside. But that doesn't stop the Caped Crusader. Why do you ask? Because he's Batman! While this new chaos spreads across Gotham, in Blackgate, Penguin is offered early release if he kills the original commissioner, Jim Gordon. He takes the deal and another prison riot is unleashed. The GCPD are spread thin, but Detective Bullock cares for one thing, the life of his friend in Blackgate. With the new Commissioner Bard's support, a large force of GCPD heads towards Blackgate while Penguin inches closer to his kill target. The GCPD arrives in time to save Gordon, but Penguin got away with help from Killer Croc. Meanwhile, Batman returns to Gotham to lend aid to his protégés. Even rookie hero in training Harper Row, aka Bluebird, is holding her own against Mr. Freeze. But with Batman's arrival, the villains fell to an over-angered, over-frustrated Dark Knight of Vengeance. Then, a line gets broadcasted into Batman's cowl. Batman, you are cordially invited to the best seat in Gotham City to watch the end of everything you hold dear. He hasn't slept in over 36 hours and now, his new target lights up a bat signal on top of Bruce Wayne's beacon tower. Like moth to a flame, Batman gets pulled on a new hunt. The rest of the Bat family and the entire GCPD with Gordon's leadership goes back to Gotham to help wherever they can. Even Selina Kyle's new crime syndicate is ordered to go out there and save the city. 
Batman arrives at the tower only to get ambushed and trapped by none other than the Clue Master. He was the one behind it all. A second rate villain that Batman wouldn't even give a second look at. Use that to his advantage. He got a Batman to chase down the worthy villains allowing him to sneak around barely unnoticed. He sent out those invitations. And it is the Clue Master who brought Gotham and a Batman to its knees as Arthur Brown prepares to kill his prize. A talon slits his throat and the Clue Master's lifeless body falls to the floor. It was Lincoln March, Bruce Wayne's supposed lost brother, who set Clue Master on his warpath. It was Lincoln March who Stephanie Brown saw. It was Lincoln March who is truly behind it all. With the wealth and knowledge of the Court of the Owls given to Clue Master, he became capable to take down the bat. And it will be Lincoln March who will reap the benefits and kill Bruce Wayne once and for all. An overexhausted Batman will surely die by the hands of a man who claims to be his brother. But Gotham rallies behind Jim Gordon who took control of an announcement system to spread a message. This is your former police commissioner Jim Gordon. I know you are frightened right now, but this is Gotham City and this is our city. Tonight it needs more than one hero. It needs all of us. Tonight we all need to do what he does for us every single night. Stephanie Brown, who was prepared to leave Gotham, instead rejoins the efforts to save Gotham City along with Canary, Katana, Batwoman, Talon, and even Killer Croc. The entire family along with the new additions all arrive at the Battle of the Century. Lincoln March's mission to turn Batman into a villain has failed. The city and his family stands behind him. Gotham is saved. And so, he slips away into the shadows. Alrighty, so that ran quite a lot longer than I thought it would be, which I think ran about 20 minutes or so. But anyway, this is just part one. A few weeks ago, I asked if you guys wanted a Batman and Robin Eternal video, which would be really cool. But we cannot cover Batman and Robin Eternal until we get through Batman Eternal. So that is the next video I'm hopefully going to come up with. Well, the next chance I get. But before that, I want to get through a Patreon request sent in by our Patreon, Jeremy. So let me know what you think about this new format of taking huge chunks of comic issues and compressing it into a short, complete story video. Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video and want to support us, I recommend checking out our Patreon page. The link will be in the description below. Thanks again. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time in another Comic Island video.